for joining the Shallow versus William Media Conference call. Your host for today is Richard Schaefer, Chairman and CEO of Rainstar Sports. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you to all the media to be on today's call. Really excited. My uh, first uh, boxing conference call after almost three years out of the sport, so I'm really excited to be at it again. And uh, what better way than do it with a, a doubleheader like this? You know, it's, it's, it's rare enough to have a matchup like Quellar versus Morris, which has fight of the year written all over it, uh, all over it. But to have Charlo versus J Rock, which is another fight of the year candidate, I can tell you that right now. To have two fight of the year candidates, it's like in today's day and age, almost unheard of. And so it really is a very special treat. And I want to thank, first and foremost, the fighters for for agreeing to these great matchups. I want to thank Showtime for the commitment to the sport to showcase fights like that and. And, you know, fight after fight, uh, Stephen goes out there and wants to put together competitive matchups, and uh, I think he's doing a absolutely uh, terrific, uh, terrific uh, job. But before we begin, um, I just want to make a brief comment. Uh, the sport of boxing lost a great friend yesterday in Todd Harleep, who uh, could be seen in countless fighters' corners, uh, including uh, Charmal Charlo, who is on the phone with us today. Um, our thoughts and prayers are with with his family and friends and the whole boxing community at this time. So uh, I'm very sorry about uh, having to report this. This fight here, um, which we are discussing today, is without any question one of the best fights which can be made in the sport, irrespective of weight class. It is a fight which was really demanded by fight fans, by media. A lot of people wondered, is it ever going to happen? And here it is. Here it is, uh, one of the most talked about fights, one of the most uh, asked for fights uh, to be seen live on Showtime Championship Boxing on December the 10th as part of this uh, terrific doubleheader with uh, Quellar and uh, Morris. Uh, the fight is, uh, is in association with Premier Boxing Champions, live from the Galen Center at the University of, of California, USC campus in Los Angeles, which is a terrific uh, uh, new uh, state-of-the-art arena where the basketball and volleyball teams of the university play as well uh, has hosted the fight there as well before with um, uh, uh, you know it was a heavyweight fight with Stavern and Ariola so uh, a great venue uh, so if you live in and around the Los Angeles area or somewhere in Southern California please make sure you come out and be part of this terrific uh, doubleheader tickets are available and are starting as at as little as $35. Great seats, I mean, fantastic seats for $35. For purchase tickets, please go to www.galentickets.com. Um, it is a pleasure now to uh, introduce to me, to you, um, our co-promoter. This fight is a co-promotion between Ringstar Sports and TGB, uh, Tom Brown. Tom Brown is very familiar uh, with the uh, uh, arena there, the Galen Center. He was uh, the one who put together the fight with the Verne and Ariola back in the days. And, uh, and so it's a pleasure now to turn it over to uh, Tom Brown to make a few comments. Well, thank you very much, Richard. I just want to say that TGB Promotions is thrilled to be partnering once again with Steven Espinosa and the great team at Showtime, along with Richard Schaefer and Ringstar Sports. I'm also happy to be back on the uh, beautiful campus of the University of Southern California at the Galen Center. The IBF championship fight between Charlo and Julian J. Rock Williams, as, as uh, Richard just mentioned, is a can't-miss matchup between two of the best junior middleweights in the world. So this, along with the main event, the WBA featherweight championship fight between Coyier and Mars, makes it a can't-miss night. And like Richard said, two possible fight-of-the-year candidate fights. Richard and I are working on putting together an action-packed undercard, which will be announced very soon. So we're looking forward to a great night on December 10th at a great venue with even greater fights. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tom. Now, uh, the next man I'm going to introduce is, uh, is a good friend of mine. We had, uh, we've known each other for a long time, and we put together some of the biggest fights uh, uh, you know, in the past, uh, back in 2013, when we were on fire. Uh, everybody recognized Showtime as the leader, the leader, <laughs> 
uh, in the sport of boxing, and that is because of, of Steven Espinosa. Steven is first and foremost a fan, and he likes to sit there and see great matchups, uh, and that's you know exactly what you're getting here. So uh, we as fight fans, uh, we as members from the media, being promoters or whatever, we can really benefit from Steven's passion of uh, putting together these amazing fights. So it's a pleasure for me to introduce to you now the I know he's a, his title is Executive Vice President and General Manager, but I'm calling him the President of Showtime Sports. <laughs> and, I always, and I always did that. Remember? <laughs> yes, you're right. Since the very first, uh, I think, the first event on the job. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Richard. Uh, you, you, we're, we're thrilled to be working with, uh, with Richard and Ringstar and, and, and Tom Brown and TGB um, once again. And uh, a special welcome to Richard, who... Uh, happy to see back in the sport, not just because he's my friend, but because uh, he is one of uh, the stand-up guys in the sport, um, very professional uh, and you know a straight shooter, and it's uh, something that this, the sport can use uh, more of. So the combination of you know Tom and Richard, are, uh, you know two straight arrows as straight as they come, and I'm thrilled to be working with both of them. Um, you know, this year Showtime really has continued to deliver um, the biggest and best fights, uh, and I think there's really no question that uh, we've had the strongest lineup of the best and most significant matchups of any network in boxing. Um, 2016 so far has included two fight of the year contenders, a KO of the year contender, fight after fight of top 10 opponent versus top 10. And as we wrap up 2016 and go into 2017, we are definitely looking to keep that momentum going. We recently announced seven great matchups, uh, including 14 top 10 fighters taking on each other, six world title fights. And we can go on and on about the numbers, you know, three fights, which are number one versus number two in the division. Um, you know, but uh, among the, uh, the pleasures of doing that is getting to make uh, fights like this one, um, you know, ever since Floyd retired, uh, you know, going on a, a little more than a year ago, there's one question that, that personally I get and all of us here at Showtime get uh, consistently, and that's, you know, who, who's the next star? Who's the next superstar? Um, who's who's going to be carrying the sport going forward? And the good thing about, you know, this this sport of boxing is that, that gets determined in the ring. I can't tell you. Um, you know, even if I were to pick two or three um, that I thought would uh, would develop that way, look, they've got to perform in the ring. But it's fights like this one, like uh, Ju- uh, Jamal Charlo versus Julian Williams, that determine who are the next stars. We've got two young fighters in the peaks of their career, one world champion um, who's established himself as as really one of the future stars of the sport uh, and taking on you know one of the toughest contenders um, in any division in, in Julian Williams. Um, we're very proud of both of these fighters. They've both been homegrown here on Showtime. Uh, Jamal has fought with us five times before. Uh, Julian has been on Showtime seven times. So we're proud that both uh, of the role that Showtime has played in both of their careers. But more importantly, we're proud that these guys stepped up to take this kind of fight. Uh, Jamal Charlo is seen as one of the most exciting young champions in the sport. Um, He's defended that title successfully, built a fan base in his hometown of Houston, and really looks to really take over um, the division and and elevate to the star echelon of the sport. Uh, Julian Williams has been a guy that people have quietly identified as one of the rising rising stars for quite some time. I know he's been um, patiently waiting and sometimes not so patiently waiting for his shot, and so I know he'll be ready. Uh, I think it's it's uh, somewhat fitting that this fight is taking place on uh, December 10th, a week before um, the, the very legendary Philadelphia world champion Bernard Hopkins retires. Um, Philly fighters um, are a long tradition, and it takes a lot of work and a special kind of individual to be called a Philly fighter. Just fighting in Philly doesn't make you a Philly fighter. 
um, and I know Julian is poised to carry that title of Philly fighter very proudly and actively for many years to come. So of all the fights that, that we've announced, and there's a lot of quality fights, you know, this fight, the Charlo Williams fight, is one of the ones that I'm most excited about. Two young guys at the peaks of their career really battling to determine who could be controlling this division for a long time to come. Um, this will help determine who are the future stars of our sport. Richard? Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Very well said. And uh, uh, for me, it's, uh, you know, they're, we all know they are terrific fighters. They both are undefeated. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've known, I've known them, both of them, for a long time. I've been involved with many of their fights. And uh, uh, so they are terrific young men outside of the ring as well and uh, just as good as it gets inside of the ring. So they're really... Both of them, they carry the total package, and uh, and you're right, uh, Stephen. Uh, he has patiently and sometimes not so patiently been waiting. Uh, it is a, a pleasure for me now to introduce to you uh, Julian Williams, uh, who is trained by Stephen Edwards. Uh, he's the number one ranked contender by the IBF in the junior middleweight division, and uh, secured his uh, top ranking after stopping Marcello Matano in the seventh round in March. Uh, the undefeated with a record of 22-0 and 14 knockouts, Julian Williams. Hey, how's everybody doing? First, I want to um, send my thoughts and prayers out to uh, Todd, Todd Harlow's family. I mean, Todd was a really great guy. I mean, uh, even better. He was a great cut man, even better guy. And I, uh, I consider him as a friend, you know what I mean? I think it's, uh, it's a sad game boxing right now, you know. So just want to do that first of all. Thank you. Um, do you have any? Uh, do you want to say any comments about uh, the fight? Do you, you know, how has training been going? Uh, any thoughts on, uh, training, thoughts on the fights? Training, training has been going really well. You know, um, uh, we have we had a really good we, we, we've been having a really good camp so far. You know, what I mean, I think it's uh, I think uh, this is a really 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 good fight. You know, I think it was uh, a fight that hardcore boxing fans you know needed to see. You know what I mean? And uh, I think it's a fight that had to happen. Uh, I uh, commend Charles for stepping up and being the true champion. And I'm ready to uh, get in there on December 10th and uh, show the world what I already know. You know what I mean? I'm uh, I'm extremely motivated, and I know uh, I know Jamal is motivated too. So uh, I think you guys are going to see a, a a real shootout, man. You know what I mean? He's uh, he's got all the tools and skills, and I got all the tools and skills. And uh, we're going to see who can come out come come out on top on December 10th. And I'm uh, I'm 100% sure it'll be me. Oh, well, thank you, uh, thank you, J Rock. Um, now, uh, Jermal Charlo and his brother as well. I've known them since the first fight, uh, and what a journey it has been. Uh, today, he is the undefeated IBF Junior Middleweight World Champion. He's training in uh, with Ronnie Shields, uh, one of the most legendary trainers out of Houston, Texas won his title by stopping Cornelius Bondrich in the third round last September and has defended his belt already twice, including a unanimous decision victory uh, over former uh, very, very game world champion uh, Austin Trout uh, in May. And it's a pleasure now for me to introduce to you again um, somebody I've introduced before many times, uh, the IBF junior middleweight world champion, Jamal Charlo. Thank you, Richard. Um like Julian said, Todd was Todd was my man, and I just want to give uh, his family and everyone that's close to Todd my prayers and my condolences. But uh, yeah, you know, I hear Julian talk about he 100% ready and he's 100% sure he's gonna win this fight. Um, but I've heard that before, and you know, I'm ready for this stage. I'm ready for this level. Um, sorry, the fight took so long. You know, it, it necessarily wasn't up to me. Um, but it, I think everything happens for a reason, and it's, it's perfect time, and I can't wait to get in there and show the world what I'm actually made of against a guy that's um, so highly um, confident about the things that I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, I agree with you. Things do happen for a reason. I'm very happy that I'm the one who has the honor to promote uh, this fight and this entire card. I know it's going to be toe-to-toe battles, 
with uh, with with the two of you, and I know with uh, Quellar and Mars as well. They say styles make fights. I think those styles of those four fighters are perfectly done, and uh, I just can't wait for December 10th uh, at the Galen Center uh, and live on Showtime Championship Boxing. We are going to uh, open it up now to the media for questions for um, any of the participants on the call. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And I'm waiting for callers to join the queue at this present time. Okay, our first question is going to come from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Please go. Jamal, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, uh, my question for you is, uh, I know that the fight is now on for uh, December 10th, and uh, I guess at one point the, the idea would, this, would be to take place in October. Uh, I know that you had to have a, a procedure that you, that you did uh, voluntarily on your, on your eye. Uh, can, you, can you give me any details about that? What exactly was the issue? Was it just a matter of like you're blind as a bat like I am, or uh, was there something else that was going on there? Um, it wasn't necessarily voluntarily. Uh, you know, I... I um pretty much won a world title and all the way up to my career uh um, as far as Las Vegas you know and um my manager Al Heyman I was legally blind you know I I fought the fight I, I you know I, I adjusted myself to be able to fight you know unclear so now I got the procedure done um I yeah the fight was supposed to happen in October and I wanted it then but it was you know just for me to be able to clear the medicals and you know less stress to, to go ahead and go uh, 2015, and, and um, I'm ready now. You know, I, um, like I said, everything happens for a reason, and crystal clear vision is, is one of the things that, that can help me uh, make this fight easier. Uh, was it actually just – was it the actual LASIK procedure, or was it something else? Well, I got ASA, something that um, combative fighters get. Um, okay. It's where the flap isn't actually – taking off and it's just a correction of the vision um, with the laser and things underneath and in the healing process just took a little bit longer than res- regular LASIK. I got you. And which eye was it, by the way, Jamal? Both eyes. Both of them. Okay. And now you say it's, you, you, you feel like a new person, like in far I'm, as I'm 110% uh, crystal clear. I'm good. I'm ready. Um, How much better uh, will that make you that you can now see clearly? I mean, your fighting skills are one thing, but now you can see the target, obviously, much better, it sounds like. I mean, do you think that will make you a much better, precise fighter? I mean, you haven't had a fight since the, the procedure, but how do you feel when you're, when you're sparring or in the gym compared to what it was like when you might have had the, the fuzzier vision? It gives me a lot more confidence. Uh, of course, it's, um, you know, something I guess like everyone in the world should probably get is, is <laughs> um, you know, I, I mean, I haven't fought with, with crystal clear vision, uh, my whole life, so now it's just like a, I'm, I'm motivated. I'm eager to get in there and uh, uh, see this what this, this new this new person was like. Did you think about having this earlier in your career, even you know even before you won, I did. You won your world title? I always wanted it. I always wanted it, but you know um, I'm, I'm I'm like a supernatural guy, so I like to keep things you know the way I've always won and you know the things I've done that um, you know weather that. So you know it's just it's just something I feel like is going to take me to the next level. I got you. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Jamal. I have a question for uh, Julian. Julian, hello, Julian. How you doing? How you doing, Dan? I'm doing good. Listen, my question for you is, uh, at the time when when, it, when the fight was being delayed, uh, I don't think a lot of people necessarily knew that uh, Jamal was having that procedure done to take care of his vision situation. There was a lot of, you know, chatter, you know, he's docking you, he doesn't want to fight you, you know, there was questions whether this fight would actually happen. Some people suggested maybe he would vacate the title and go up to middleweight to, to not fight you. When all that was happening and you were sitting there as the mandatory for him, what was your personal feeling about what was going on? Did you think, did you know about his medical situation? Were you concerned that he would look to avoid you and you'd end up fighting somebody else in a, in a lesser profile fight for a vacant title? Where, where was your head at while that was going on? I didn't really know about the medical situation until about, you know, uh, mid, mid-September, you know what I mean? Um, I honestly didn't, I honestly thought that he would fight, you know, I think the, the notion that uh, that he would vacate, you know, kind of like came from the delay, you know what I mean? And the fact that he was, he kept complaining about weight in the previous fights, 
You know what I mean? I think uh, naturally people, if, if the fight was being delayed, naturally people want to start saying, oh, he's ducking. That's just how boxing is. Right. You know what I mean? But um, I didn't think that he was, you know, going to duck. I thought that he was putting the fight off for whatever reason. But like I said, at the time, I didn't know what the reason was. You all right. Now, I, mean? I know but, you uh, wanted this fight is, for a long time. All, Oh, go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah, definitely. All, all, all that is under the bridge. You know, all, it doesn't even matter no more. The fight is December 10th. You know what I mean? He said he's going to bring his A game. He's got 20-20 vision. I had 20-20 vision my whole life. So, you know what I mean? Now we're even. So, so no excuses. You know, I know how much you wanted this fight. fight, obviously. I mean, everybody's fighters dream to fight for a, a title, uh, and you've, you've been outspoken about that. When you found out that you that it was finally done and it was good to go and Showtime was going to announce it and the fight was on, what was your feeling? Was it relief? Was it excitement? How did you feel knowing you're finally getting the opportunity you've waited for for I quite just, a while? I just felt like I wanted to get to work. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I knew, like I said before, that the whole process just made me have practice my patience. You know what I mean? So I didn't, uh, I wasn't like overly excited because I knew I would fight for the world title in my next fight regardless of who I was fighting. So, you know what I mean? I was I was more so like let's let's look at the work. I want to start training camp immediately, you know what I mean, get myself ready to win. All right, very good. Thank you very much, fellas. Appreciate your time. Good luck to both of you. No problem. Thank you. Our next question is gonna come from Mitch Aperson from the Ring T V dot com. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks. Hi everybody. Um had a question for both uh Jamal and Julian. Um Jamal, just wondering, you know, your your fight is obviously a very big fight. Um huge in boxing. Was there any frustration that you guys were not in the main event and that you're in the co-feature, or did you kind of understand because Abner Maris is from Southern California that that's the reason why you guys were put in the co-feature? Um, Richard Schaefer is is a is a good promoter. He he has a lot of experience in the game. Um, I I'm not worried about being the opening or the main event or any of that. Of course, you know I'm tired of being second place. I feel like Kevin Durant. But it's just not in the sense of, like, nothing I can do about it. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's whatever. And then, Julian, same question for you. Was there any, any you know, uh, surprise that you guys were put in the cold feature or not the main event? Um, I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't really, really even think about it. You know what I mean? I love really when it was a time in the deep and, and, and the ring and some gloves so we can get this thing going. You know what I mean? I think uh, – I think everything happened for a reason. You know, Abner Marez is a uh, is a really good fighter. He's a uh, he's like a two or three division champion. You know what I mean, he uh, he earned his stripes. You know what I mean. So uh, obviously, we got more work to do before we can uh, head on the card. So uh, I didn't. And, and on top of that, I never thought about it. I just was happy that we had a date. Well, okay, Mitch, I... you know, you know, Mitch. The fact is, you're absolutely right. Each each one of those events could be a main event, and in in any other network would be a main event. Some other networks would probably even make it a pay per view. Um, so that's how good this card is. And uh, so, you know, I mean, it could have very easily been uh, uh, Charlo Williams as the main event. If it would have been in Philly, it would have been. If it would have been in Houston, it would have been. It's in L.A., in Southern California. So that's why we have uh, Quella and Mars. So, you know, I mean, if this is about creating excitement. It's about uh, the fans and so on. And so, uh, uh, and these are all four of those guys are just terrific champions. And that's what they are terrific people and so it doesn't really it doesn't really impact one way or the other yeah and i'll add from the network perspective i mean one of the things that we uh, were grateful for uh in working with with fighters like these and 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 promoters like tom and richard is you know when we want to put together blockbuster events you know we we don't have those ego problems um you know richard's absolutely right not every network programs this way but what what we're trying to do, and I mean we as a group of fighters, promoters, managers, is show off the best this sport has to offer. So we're really over-delivering on each card. Um, this this clearly could have been a main event in Houston or Philly or anywhere else, but the idea was, you know, this was going to be a slate of A++ level fights top to bottom, you know, and that requires, you know, the commitment of everybody and, you know, people realizing not having ego and just realizing that, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Our next question is going to come from Eddie Goldman from No Holes Bar. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. 
first question for uh, Jamal: When when you're taking this fight, you have experience beating some former champions like uh, Bundridge and Trout. What do you think uh, Julian Williams rates as an opponent? Do you think he's your toughest opponent because he's young and undefeated, or where do you think he fits in that uh, all those? Um, we both undefeated, you know, toughest opponent up to date. Um, he's hungry as me. Um, I'm not necessarily worried about any of the things he said to be um, as hungry as he is to be fighting me. You know, I, I was that guy too, you know, getting ready to fight a uh, canine and child. I was, you know, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's to us to the day. Yeah. He's, he's my toughest opponent. Um, and I'm ready for it. Right. Can you comment on, this it, it was mentioned earlier, but it it doesn't happen all the time in boxing that you have two undefeated twenty six year old fighters face each other. They usually you, you know what happens. They usually showcase fights and opponents. Tell us about taking this fight and why it's important to you. I actually don't you know what happened because um every fight is a hard fight. Every fight I have to come out and give my best and and um, be on my A game. So. Um, I mean, it's a good fight to me. To me, technically, this is the, the this is the Roy Jones and uh and Bernard Hopkins back in middleweight type of fight, you know, where we're gonna get down and get dirty, and then I'm ready for it, you know. Um, I, I, you know, it's just part of our legacy. It's um, everything that I've wanted, you know, growing up as a as a young fighter, um, young champion, seeing these great fights be uh, broadcast on Showtime, and it's like. Now is my turn, and and you know I have to deliver everything that I've always wanted, and that's something I've you know I've been waiting for, and it, and just so happened it has to be Julian Williams, and like I said, we both came up um the the, the hard route. It wasn't like nothing was easy. I I get my hat off to my my challenge of being one of the best in the world, and then that's kind of what I want to be um, classified as, like the best fighting the best, and you know um I'm Jamal Charlotte. I'm I'm here to stay. And Julian, also, you've been very vocal about this fight. Tell us why you're so confident you're going to be able to win this fight. Um, I'm confident because I believe. Was he I'm listening to Brad, man? He, he listened to Brad, man. To think he know everything about me. Like I said, I'm confident because I really believe I'm the best dream in the way the world. You know what I mean? I think Jamal is a good fighter. You know what I mean? But, you know, he's, he, 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 don't, he doesn't present nothing I haven't seen before. You know what I mean? He's, uh, he's big, he's strong, he's fast. You know what I mean? I just want to make sure I don't hear no excuses about weight and none of that kind of shit when, 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 when after, no, I don't you know, have a weight fight. fight. The best in the world, there's no weight problem. There's no weight problem. Get that shit out your mind. There's no weight okay. problem. Okay. I'm going to okay. give you well, everything I, I, that I've done. I gave everybody I'm else. Tired of, I'm tired of, how about this? Well, stop talking I'm listening to the critics, bro. I have never had a weight problem. Listen, I'm a woman. Okay. Any other questions? That's it. Yes, our next question is going to come from, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Our next question is going to come from Lim Satterfield. From Premier Boxing um, Champ, please go ahead. Hey, how are you doing? Hi, Richard. Hey, how are you, Lamb? Hey, blessed. I'm blessed. Um, first question is for uh, Jamal. Uh, Jamal, uh, first of all, I want to offer my condolences to you um, on Todd's passing. Um, can you, you had talked about him earlier. Can you elaborate on what he meant to you and the confidence he brought to you uh, as as an uh, assistant to uh, Ron Fields? Todd taught me a lot, you know. Um, he meant a lot to me. Also, you know, Ronnie Shields and Todd would sit and just, you know, elaborate about how long they've been around this boxing game and seeing the same things they're seeing now. And, it, um, you know, Todd meant a lot. just spoke to him, like, a couple of days ago because he sent me a, a few guys to work with. And, and um, I knew he had went over to Russia and caught a little bug, but I thought I didn't think it would be nothing that, you know, I'd pray for him and hope he got better. Um, I, I, I mean, it, it, like I said, it just happened to be something that, you know, I can't control. So I just have to keep fighting and, um, you know, hope that my next cut man is just as good as Todd. Um, I've even been across the ring and looked at Todd working on another guy, and, and, and he came to talk to me and let me know that it was just 
you know, it's our business and Jamal just stay focused. Don't worry about anything. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm done. I mean, I mean, I'm just putting this fight in God's hands and, and just hoping that I never, um, have to, you know, need the urgency to need Todd again. Um, I spoke to, uh, Ronnie. Um, he said that you told him, I think yesterday that, uh, this, this fight is going to be a little more special because you're going to, um, possibly dedicate this fight to him? Um, is that going to take any form um, representing his name on your robe or, or your trunks or anything like that? Um, yes, I'm dedicating this fight to Todd. Um, yeah, see, you know, once uh, we, we map everything out, but, you know, I, I want to keep uh, talking about it. Okay. You know, I dedicate this fight to Todd. This you know, he's a real close friend of mine, and, you know, it's just it's just unfortunate for me to have to get in the locker room and not have time helping me out and, and everything like that. So, you know, of course, I, I feel some type of way about him being not being here, but I know he's in good hands. So, you know, that's the main thing. Thank you so much. Um, my next question is for uh, Julian. Julian, are you there? Yeah. I, know you've talked, I know you've talked about um, – you know, being a throwback fighter and also, um, you know, wanting to be uh, a, a world champion and, you know, establish a legacy. Is this fight right here the first one that really will test you and perhaps take you to the next level and start that, like that, that fuse for you? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Whenever you got a 50-50 fight, we, you know, two guys just 26 years old, both on the feet in the prime of the career, you know what I mean? Uh, it's going to be a test for both fighters, you know what I mean? Uh, rarely in these kind of fights, you know what I mean, you see two fighters get in the ring in this kind of type of fight and not, and, and, and not test each other, you know what I mean? So uh, I think it's definitely the first step to, you know, building my legacy. And uh, my next question, Richard, I have just one question for you. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a fight that, um, you know, I know you have a vision for certain fights and what they mean to the scope of the division. Um, what does this fight represent in in the scheme of this division, which is which is a stacked division, and these two fighters in particular? I think uh, you have two of the best fighters in their div- division fighting in this particular fight, and so this is an extremely significant significant fight for the division. And um, these are two, as somebody said before, these are two young, uh, undefeated, and confident fighters who dare to be great. I mean, at this point in their career, fighting each other, they're there to be great. And that is, these kind of fights is what will separate one from the other. And um, I think the, the sky is the limit uh, here uh, for within that division and potentially other divisions. But that's how, how, that, that is how you build a champion into a star and then a superstar. This is these kind of fights, you know, these kind of meaningful fights. And in order for that to happen, you need to have two fighters who are willing to challenge themselves. And as I said, dare to be great. Richard, thanks a lot, guys. Good luck in the fight. Appreciate you answering my question. Thank you. And our last question is going to come from Greg Leon from Boxing Talk. Please go ahead. Just a couple of questions for Jamal. Jamal, uh, what weaknesses do you see in Julian Williams that you plan to exploit on fight night? Um, nothing. He has, he's a strong guy. Whatever y'all want to say about him, he's a good old school fighter. Y'all know everything. He, you know, I don't. I'm tired of hearing questions about what he does and all that good stuff. Man, it, look, I'm the champion for a reason. I'm a state champion. I'm, I, I don't plan on losing. I don't plan on none of that crap that y'all talked about. I'm good, man. Next question. What do you consider your biggest advantage going into this fight? That I'm not focused on being some, uh, you know, a superstar and this whole old school fighters uh, thrill with, you know, Ronnie Shields talking crap like uh, the Philly fighters trainers do. And, and, and you know, man, look, it's, it's a business. I'm I'm ready for everything that boxing has to offer, and my advantage is, is being um, focused and humble and and and, and strong-minded like I've always been. 
Thank you, Jamal. I appreciate it. Good. Um, so, since this actually, we do have um, one last question from uh, Salvador Rodriguez from ESPN.com. Oh, okay. ESPN, please go ahead. Hello, Richard. Uh, nice to talk to you. Uh, this uh, this is the same question for for Julian and Jermal. How important is fighting uh, Jermal or Julian at this point of your career? How how important is to building uh, like like Richard said uh, before? How is how important is building a new new chapter in your career and uh, maybe the new idol in in boxing? I don't know. It's to each yeah. one, so maybe um, uh, Julian, do you want to uh, answer that first? Oh, oh, was that for me? Yes, it's for both of you. So he'd like to, uh, Salvador, like to know from both of you um, uh, that question. So maybe Julian, you can answer it first, and then. Could you, could you repeat yourself, please? I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, it's how important it uh, having in front. Jermal uh, Charlo in your career. How how big is this fight for you? Oh, it's an extreme, it's an extremely big fight. You know, what I mean, I think uh, I think whoever wins this fight is going to be considered the best dream dream middleweight in the world. You know, I think uh, whoever, whoever wins the fight will have the most significant win in the dream middleweight division. You know, what I mean, I think uh, uh, since Canelo was you know is basically said he's not fighting on 54 no more. You know, whoever wins the fight is going to be king of the division. Now, so I think it's extremely, extremely important. And the same question for you, uh, Jermal, please. Uh, very big fight. Very important fight for me. Um, clinch the division. Um, you know, it's going to be a good fight, man. I'm ready, I'm ready, man, just to give everything I have. Like, it's going to be a good fight for me, and it's going to be a good fight for Julian and both. Like, um, you know, we, we both get to win. And we both here to get the fans what they want to see. So it's, it's, it's that time. And finally, for for thank you. And finally, for Richard and Stephen. Richard, how how important was for you uh, and beginning, uh, golden beginning like like this for you uh, for Ring Star Sports and for Stephen. Uh, how important was uh, giving us a golden closure for for Showtime this year with this with this card with this tremendous card. Well, from the Showtime perspective, um, you know, our goal is, is to provide, you know, spectacular fights, you know, every month or more often if we can, sometimes due to scheduling or injuries or things, and, you know, there are, you know, some gaps in our schedule. But once we came back, we wanted to end the year strong and really send a message about our commitment to the sport. So with the help of the promoters, the, uh, the managers, and, and most importantly, the fighters, we're able to put together a slate, you know, that is stronger than anything we've seen in in recent, you know, in recent boxing programming uh, schedule. It really is, you know, all uh, without the use of pay-per-view, and it's all, you know, top guy versus top guy. It's something that is uh, very special to us, we're very proud of, and we're looking to continue it throughout all of 17. Well, and, and for me, you know, I think my reputation speaks for itself. I like to put together big events, significant fights, and uh, that's what I've always done. And this fight here is no exception to come back and put together a card, promote a card which uh, consists, without any question, of two potential fight of the year candidates, um, two barn burners in one night, uh, is, is, a, is, is a dream come true. And to do that from my hometown, to do it from the University of uh, Southern California, USC, Galen Center, the newest indoor venue in Los Angeles, uh, and the university where two of my sons go to school. Uh, I mean, this is a, it's a very special night for me, and, uh, uh, and it's a very special night as well because uh, uh, Charlo and Williams and Morris and Queller, I have known these young men for a long time, so it really is nice. Uh, it's like a coming home or coming back, and uh, it's, it's really meaningful for me. Um, 
since uh, this was the last question, I understand. Uh, I like to thank you all, but I want to make one comment. Um, yes, uh, they both have 2020 vision, uh, but let there be no question about it. The name of this card is 5050, and you know why it's 5050 <laughs> because these two cards are 50, these two fights are 5050 fights, and so. Might a better man win that night as, as a fan? I'm excited. I can't wait for December 10th. Please, please make it out to the Galen Center for $35. You can watch two of the best fights of the year uh, in one night at the Galen Center. Or if you can't make it there, uh, then make sure you turn in on Showtime Championship Boxing at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. I'm looking forward to see you all uh, during Fight Week, and thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Jamal, thank and you. thank you very much, Jay Rock. Thank you, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining. You may all disconnect and have a wonderful day.